When an object changes position over time, it is in motion. To calculate motion, you must determine the amount of time it takes for an object to move a certain distance. You must also calculate the total distance traveled. Once you know the distance and time, you can describe an object's motion and how it changes. Distance is the length between the starting and ending points, and they can be measured. Units such as meters, kilometers, feet, and miles describe distance. Words such as left, right, north, south, backwards, and forwards describe direction. Position and motion make sense only if you have a frame of reference. A frame of reference is a group of objects from which you can measure a position or motion. The objects around you are a frame of reference. If I said I moved two meters to the right of my desk, you know my new position compared to my desk. How can position and velocity be described and quantified when explaining motion? This is describing motion. An object is in motion if its position changes relative to a reference point. Speed refers to how fast an object is moving. Speed can be thought of as a rate in which an object covers distance. Velocity is the rate in which an object changes its position. Today you will be investigating how to describe changes in position and velocity over time. The setup for this investigation is pretty simple. You're going to need your SparkView software, and today we're going to be using a motion sensor. You're going to need a meter stick, or you can use a tape measure, either will work, and then some masking tape. So when you're setting this up, it's going to be important that your motion sensor is facing you, and it's about the height of one meter. So if your desks are lower than what I have right here, you can stack up several books and get it to the right height. Again, you're looking to get it at a height of about one meter from the floor. Once you have that set up, you are going to need to set up two points of reference on the floor. Uh, so you'll measure 0.25 meters. So I'm 0.25 meters. And then you're going to want to continue and measure backwards to a full meter. That's our setup. All right, so let's get into data collection. For this investigation, you're gonna be taking four runs. Three are gonna be for position, one is gonna be for velocity. You are going to start by being 0.25 meters from the front of your motion sensor. Again, I have this metal screen facing towards me. I'm gonna walk backwards uh, at a regular pace and then forwards again, that's my first run. The next, we're going to do it at a faster pace. The third will be a slower pace. And then for run four, we're going to calculate velocity. We're going to do a velocity over time graph. All right, here we go. I am going to start at sensor data and choose the graph display. My motion sensor is connected. And here you see I have a graph of position over time. It's nice if you have a partner, if you're doing this. Uh, I have it set up so I can handle it on my own, uh, but just consider having a partner. You might need that. All right, so I am starting at 0.25 meters, and this first run is going to be at a regular pace. I'm going to start. All right, so that's my first run. Uh, you might notice that I paused for two seconds once I got to the one meter mark. You're going to do that for each of these runs. All right, for the second one, I am going to go at a much faster pace. Excellent. All right, run three. Now I'm going to go slower than I did in my first run. Okay, so those are your first three position over time graphs. 
Now I want to create a velocity over time graph. To do that, I am just going to go over here and change this from position to velocity. Don't worry about the data you're seeing right now. When we get into the analysis piece, I'm going to show you how to work through this and make it cleaner for you. All right, so now one other thing I want to show you is if you look at the bottom left-hand side, this is your sample rate. And right now it's set at 20 hertz. Doing the velocity over time at 20 hertz, your data might look a little noisy. So I'm going to change that data collection rate to 2 hertz. And feel free to investigate this when you're working through the investigation yourself, but I found that 2 hertz gives me nice, clean data. All right, ready to go. And for this one, I'm just going to go at a regular pace. Okay, now you have your four runs, all of your data has been collected. Okay, so we've collected all of our data and now we're going to have to go into the analysis portion of the activity. I want to show you a few tricks here to make sure that you label your data properly. So in case it's something you have to go back and reference the next day, you can access it. And you're also going to be having to calculate slope. Uh, don't worry, our software is going to do that for you, and I'm going to model how you would do that as well. All right, so you took four runs, three were position, the final one was velocity. So what we're going to do first is rename our runs. So I'm going to go to this experiment tools bar and click on that and do manage runs and choose run to rename. So I want the first run to say position, and I went regular speed for this one, or you could say normal, whatever works for you. Manage runs again. Let's change run two to position faster speed. You could also say velocity because I went backwards and forwards, so that's speed in a certain direction. Manage runs again, run three, let's say position slower speed, and almost done. Let's rename the fourth run that's going to say velocity. And you could say at normal speed if you want. All right, you are going to be charged with finding the slope uh, within each of these graphs. I'm going to move the velocity back to position, and I'm going to clear out run two, three, and four so I can model this for you. I'm going to scale to fit. All right, so you're going to have to select a portion of your graph and calculate the slope so you can see the rate of change over time. So I'm going to click the Select tool here and draw a nice box. You can expand it. I'm going to bring it up to here. And when you're looking at the top here, there is a linear fit tool. And when I click on that, look at that. It gives you the slope. The slope is 0 0.321 meters per second. So that's going to be my rate of change over time for that position. You're going to have to do that for the other uh, three runs. And based on that data that you've collected and analyzed and the intro part of this video, you'll be able to complete the questions in your student handout. You got this.